Most of us don't like to wait for pretty much anything nowadays, especially for things that we think are important. Imagine waiting for something that you need to save your life, though. As we continue this week's special coverage of organ donation within multicultural communities, we meet a man who says he has the keys to his time in his life, literally. Alfonso Horn is a music man. Known for his talent and his style, he played professionally in Jacksonville for a long time. Less and less the past five years, though. On this day, he plays on a piano at Mayo Clinic after one of his regular visits here. Alfonso is in severe heart failure, and he needs a heart transplant. The physician treating him says without it, Alfonso won't survive. So he has cardiomyopathy, so weakness of the heart muscle, and as a result, he developed congestive heart failure. Uh, so the heart has weak weakened to the point where it's difficulty um, maintaining proper fluid balance and being able to breathe, um, and he has swelling and shortness of breath, things like that. And that's because the heart just has become weakened over time. Alfonso is one of nearly 118,000 patients in America waiting for the gift of life. He knows that 58% are, like him, from multicultural communities. And he understands that donation rates within those communities are low. That's why he's sharing his story. He says the keys to making change are seeing and hearing from people just like him. Because they did uh, like a right heart calf, and, then, and evidently he saw something that he didn't like. So she said, yeah, we got, it's time to take more aggressive measures. As the number of people waiting for transplants has increased, so have the waiting times for patients at Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville and across the nation. Yeah. Alfonso Horn has been waiting three years. Until a donor heart comes, medical technology pumps his heart for him. Hidden under his shirt, it keeps him alive. These long waits for patients like Horn are frustrating for doctors who know much of the resistance to organ donation is because of a myth that organ donors don't get the life-saving care they need. I think that that plays a big role of trust in the health care. Um, so if we have trust within our health care providers between patients, family members, and health care providers, then we can have open dialogue regarding uh, breaking down any barriers or any miscommunication about the process of organ donation. Alfonso's hopes are very basic. He sums it up simply. Maybe um, spend some happy time with my wife and stuff like that. And, you know, just try to live a long, prosperous, productive life, positive life. You see what I'm saying? Alfonso has one reason for sharing his story. He hopes it will encourage others like him who are waiting without knowing for sure if they will receive the gift of life. His advice to them? Never let a negative thought into your head. He fills his heart with memories of things he loves and will return to, like swimming in his pool. He finds a way to smile and laugh. And when worries and fears try to get to him, he drowns them out with music. Yeah. What a great guy there. Tomorrow morning, we finish our special coverage with the story of a woman who grew up saying no to organ donation. Now she is giving back big time. Of course, to learn more about being an organ donor, go online to donatelifeflorida.org. You can do it this morning. Very easy to sign up, and you could save some lives.